Hi, I'm Anthony Gosh, consultant spinal neurosurgeon and founder of the Spine MDT. And this is a short series of videos about deformity of the spine. And today we're going to talk about scoliosis. So here we have a model of the spine and scoliosis is a side to side, a sideways uh, deformity of the spine. So here we're looking at a miniature model of the spine front on view. And it's usually a sideways deformity, but it can also include some rotation. We broadly divide it up into adolescent scoliosis and adult degenerative scoliosis. To explain the mechanisms, let's have a quick look at the anatomy of the spine. So here's the human spine again. Um, it's made up of a stack of bones called vertebrae. Each vertebrae is a block of bone. So here we have a human scale model of each vertebrae. So that's a vertebrae itself made up of the body, this bit here which sits at the front of the spine and an arch of bone at the back. And that creates a little canal in the middle. So when you stack the bones on top of each other, you create a canal down the middle of the spine where the spinal cord runs and all the spinal nerves. And we divide the spine up into cervical, which is the neck area, thoracic, which is the region um, within the rib cage, and then lumbar, which is the lower back. And then inside your pelvis, you have the sacral spine and the coccyx. Then each vertebra, each segment is joined together by joints at the back of the spine. These here called facet joints. They just allow a couple of degrees of movement at each level of forward and backwards angulation, side to side, a little bit of rotation. But there's also ligaments that strap the bones together. And in between each bone, you have these soft cushions called discs. Adolescent scoliosis is what happens during childhood and teen years. So for that, we have to understand a little bit about how the spine grows. Most bones in our body have plates at each end of them called growth plates. And that's where a lot of the growth happens. And it tends to be in the spine around these end plates uh, at the ends of each bones where the growth happens. The mechanisms are not fully understood why some children develop scoliosis and why others don't. Um, we do see siblings um, where both have scoliosis, but equally we see um, patterns where parents or other members of the family have, have never had it before and children develop it. So we think there possibly is a genetic element to it and that's been looked, looked into, but it's not fully understood. One of the theories is that for some reason or another, the growth plates get shunted um, to one side and therefore one side grows quicker uh, than the other side, causing over time that the curvature to happen and then become exaggerated in the long, you know, in the long segment of your spine, it just becomes exaggerated and forms this um, severe curve over time. And then when children reach the sort of the, the spurt, the, the growth spurt, just at that sort of puberty period, and there's an acceleration in the growth, that's when it really becomes um, apparent. And people have raised a theory as to whether rucksacks carrying it on one shoulder only uh, can cause the problem. Well, the trouble is lots and lots and lots of children do that. And the majority of them don't have um, scoliosis to the form where they need any um, invasive treatment. However, one could speculate that if you're already predisposed to the scoliosis, if you've already started to show signs of the curvature, the growth plates on one side are growing quicker and you're wearing your rucks out on the opposite side, theoretically you could shunt the growth even further and worsen it, but that's still quite speculative. But because that growth spurt at the pre or early teen years is um, the sort of turning point where growth happens quickly and therefore the curvature starts to go, that's why diagnosis is really important early as possible because there are mechanisms that can be adopted with special braces you can wear <clears throat> to prevent it getting worse. And the idea of these braces that you wear, they're kind of, they're custom made and they put some restriction on one side of the spine so that during the growth spurt, things kind of try and even out over time and they can be quite effective. So an important measurement or predictor is what we call the Cobb angle. And when we look at the amount of curvature and the way you, the way you measure it, you take the two points um, where the curve is at its maximum on, the, on an X-ray and draw a line parallel to the end plate. So for example, here and here, and then measure you know, that angle. Um, and there are different guidelines 
many people have some curvature of the spine you know it's under 10 degrees or so we wouldn't really call that scoliosis most patients with a cob angle or curvature of about 40 degrees or so the majority especially in that period just at the growth spurt we should be able to manage them with a brace to start with if you can capture it before that growth acceleration to try and correct some of it um, there may be a curve there remaining but if it's not causing an excessive um, deformity cosmetically or restriction um, of movement or a lot of symptoms then you don't always have to treat these things surgically guidelines vary from some degree but above the angle of say 40 or especially 50 actually then surgery is strongly advised because it's likely at that point that things won't correct um, and the reason you do surgery if the curvature is so bad you can start putting restrictions on the rib cage where you've got you know the thoracic segment here is where your rib cage comes out if the curvature is so bad sometimes you've got the top of the hip bone touching the rib cage um, it, the rotation as well can cause problems with the ribs lungs not fully expanding so your heart and lungs don't function as well as they should so the reason for doing the operation is predominantly to preserve function so if a patient is at the point where they've completed their growth and they've got quite an excessive curvature as described um, then surgery can be advised you know if the cop angle is 40 or 50 degrees especially and above um, it often depends on the amount of the spine that's involved and how long you have to go to straighten it out and there are various types of operations depending on each individual's uh, um, patient but a common one is where you expose the back of the spine and then in the bones individual bones you've got the pedicle so this is the front of the spine back of the spine these bits here are called the pedicles so a screw is inserted into these bones so they miss this canal in the middle where all the nerves are and also from the side view you want to miss um, this opening here where the nerve is so you put the pedicle screws in in each you know in each bone and then connect the heads of those screws with a rod up and down either side at the back of the spine and as you anchor the rod down onto the screw heads um, you, you also straighten it up and then straighten the whole of the spine you often have to disconnect a lot of the facet joints here because sometimes they can fuse together so you have to disconnect them surgically and very rarely have to do some work at the front of the spine to disconnect bones that have actually fused up um, at the front not very often but some sometimes so it's quite an extensive procedure it usually involves a team of um, two um, spinal orthopedic surgeons at least and monitoring ele electrophysiological uh, monitoring um, of the nerves and we advise even i advise this is done at a um, specialist center that, that does that specific type of operation uh, quite frequently now let's talk about adult uh, scoliosis and this is now what we call degenerative scoliosis it, it usually happens as a result of um, wear and tear of the spine of the facet joints at the back of the spine um, and collapse of the discs just basically you've got wear and tear of all the different areas that the bones are joined together and then the time when area collapses down one side will collapse more than the other um, and then cause that curvature in some patients it can be a kind of continuation or triggered from having adolescent scoliosis and then later in life that can have effects um, and, and make you a little bit more prone um, to wear and tear and curvature it can cause back pain depending on instability um, develops but the main reason I end up seeing these patients are the symptoms they present with when they come to me is because of the curvature the opening at the side of the spine here where the nerve leaves narrows down if we, you know if you tilt the bone over like this eventually if you look at that nerve there as I'm tilting the bone over it's narrowing it down and crushing that nerve um, and that's that usually presents with pain from a nerve shooting down the leg so if i'm the only scenarios where i tend personally me where i tend to correct a scoliosis in an adult is when there's nerve compression and it's for the purpose of decompressing that nerve um, and it also depends on the configuration of the curvature uh, and so forth and usually the, um, that does require again a construct of screws and rods 
Uh, sometimes in between the bones, you have to remove the disc and put in a breeze block with a cage to allow the bodies to fuse together. And it's very rare, and I don't tend to do a lot of segments, just a short, just a few vertebrae, depending on how many levels are compressed uh, and the configuration of it. So it takes a bit of work up to figure all that stuff out with standing x-rays um, and also a good analysis of the MRI scan and make sure the picture fits with the patient. And I've been explained, it's not a cosmetic procedure, it's to try and improve function. For back pain alone, it's that's where th things get a bit controversial between surgeons as well. I personally think there's very little evidence to support straightening up of scoliosis purely for back pain alone, unless you can demonstrate there's an area within that of instability between x-rays of flexing from one side to the other or standing upright and bending forwards. If you can see instability, a segment moving, um, then that's a different story. But most of the time, the reason I'll be doing surgery is to decompress nerves. And often that's if the more conservative measures of um, physiotherapy and even pain management, various injections to target the specific nerves that are causing pain. It's only when all that stuff has failed. For information, you can visit us at spinemdt.com and take our free online assessment. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please, please click the like button and subscribe. It really helps patients suffering with back pain and spine disease find useful information that I try and post here every week.